Europe and Russia, what is their relationship in this century? And what is the relationship for the future? Is it the fulcrum on which uh, all uh, international relations will focus in the future as American power declines? Or will America resurge and then counterbalance Russia, or Russia counterbalance the US? Is Europe's relationship with Russia about living space, or is it détente? These are all interesting questions in which I will be uh, uh, trying to get a discussion going in the comments, and I shall now try and uh, answer them. Well, the EU is an economic power. It's, tr it's a trading power. It's a technological power, but it's not a military power. It has a two large militaries and um, a, a French military which is a colonial which is still basically geared towards colonial warfare because they are they're interceding in the Mediterranean and into the former uh, um, French colonies in um, West Af sorry West Africa uh, this is why they have a highly mobile force uh, of, and the most helicopters in the EU, which is an important part. And also, recently, President Sarkozy just made himself uh, take France into the command and control of NATO. So now all the European powers are within the control, command and co control of NATO. Now, Scott Ritter, the UN weapons inspector, in Iraq said that Europe is merely a colony of the United States it is, it is, they stand for nothing they do nothing and they mean nothing um, I think this is uh, overestimated America has a massive military presence in Europe but also are not Britain and, Amer and Germany uh, large military powers in their own right America is not the only country with a, uh, with a nuclear deterrent. Uh, Britain has a quite a large nuclear deterrent in that it can destroy a whole country. And Germany has a large uh, uh, Bundeswehr and also is building up its naval power, just like England is. But apparently... Russia is the only power on the Eurasian continent that can match America uh, technologically in weapon in weapons. They also control all of the oil routes into um, Europe, and the war recent war in Georgia means that they control all the the last pipeline into Europe. Now also you've got the rise of another Indo-European power. Iran and Russia and Iran's um, relationship is, is is quite is quite close. They sell weapons to each other. They Iran controls many of the uh, pipelines going through southern Iraq by default of the fact that it has a Shia regime there and it controls territorially pipelines that go through its territory. Um, so Russia and Iran have have quite an access. Um, does this mean that Russia is going to get its uh, its uh, foot foothold in the in the sunshine on the coast of Iran with military bases and naval bases? This is an interesting question for the future. But this talk is on Europe and Russia's relationship. Well, Europe has most of its trade with Russia, and because Germany trades most with Russia, and England trades most with Germany. So, it seems to me that England and Germany are the most important um, powers within Europe, and that's where the uh, alliance in Europe is going to focus in the future. It, the, the deeper um, England becomes involved with the European Union. Now, deeper and deepening and widening of Europe is uh, a critical point because the Benelux countries that's Belgium, uh, Holland and uh, Luxembourg and Germany um, 
but less so the Scandinavians uh, want to make um, a very very deep integration in Europe and England doesn't want that it wants a wide integration and that's why it's welcomed in um, UK Ukraine as a potential um, uh, member uh, Turkey is a potential member of the EU and this is really to decentralize power away from Germany because there is a rivalry going on now because of the conservative nature of um, UK politics um, you've got to remember that the UK although it is uh, English majority country um, and that is the Germanic population it's uh, not it hasn't got a government that's run um, by the majority of people. The majority of people in government are Scottish, um, although the Scots will soon have their independence. Um, but they tend to be rather pro-Europe, whereas the English tend to be rather anti-Europe. So you've got a paradox there. Um, so the central relationship between in Europe is between France and Germany. Um, although England is arguably more powerful than France. Uh, so, but who do the Russians see? That's the important point. The Russians immediately always go to Germany. They go to Berlin because when they're dealing with Europe, they know who runs Europe. Uh, does Germany want to expand into uh, Europe to expand into Ukraine? Perhaps in the future, but it requires a much more deeper integration in the core western part of Europe. This is what Donald Rumsfeld called Old Europe and New Europe. And it's also why the Americans want Turkey, which is a strong NATO ally and is as where the Americans have got a lot of influence to join because it would debalance Europe and take away power from the northwestern peoples and give it to um, a central, a central Asian power, Turkey, which has more, uh, t more interest with America. This is the rivalry that's going on between America and Europe because uh, APAC hates Europe um, because they're a bunch of religious fundamentalists. Uh, this is also why they have an irrational um, view towards Russia. Uh, but what will Russia and um, Europe's relationship be? Will we be enemies or will we move closer together? Well, this is a really tough question because as I said in my last uh, talk, we need really to keep the West together. But how can, we keep, how can Europe keep the West together when America seems to be going off on its own thing and is really its elite only seems to be concerned about Israel rather than the interests of the uh, of America. America, after all, is not a Middle Eastern country. It's a Western country it, with a Western majority population. Um, <clears throat> not a, uh, a Semitic population, not a population of um, Arabs and Israelis. It's got a population of Americans, Western people. Uh, now the, the the Russians are perhaps not seeing the Americans as a rational actor because they're of course deeply entrenched in Iran and um, will want to have some influence over there. They, Europe in this is practically neutral. Um, so where military uh, conflicts happen, Europe will stay neutral because it doesn't want to be um, between America and. Russia. So therefore, you're seeing quite an independent strategy by Europe. It's not getting itself involved in entangling alliances, but rather it's trying to keep stability between Russia and America. And I think that's the, the main point, really, of why Europe's been successful, because in its diplomat, diplomatic um, overtures. And you can see this because of not the, the direction of the Germans, but the direction of England as the link, as Churchill said, a great man, said um, between England, uh, between Europe, England being the link between Europe and America. Now Europe is acting like a link between America and Russia, 
And this might be the thing that keeps the West together.